They attack the Bible and try to make you look stupid. Don't you be intimidated as a one can say. Just because they can quote Derrida, just because they can quote feminist theologians, just because they can quote the latest th philosophical fashion. So what? It ain't going to save a soul. It's only gospel. It's only Christ crucified. It's only him dying on a cross and shedding his blood for our sin. It's only him that will save us. And that's the only message that the church needs. Christ crucified. A 10-year-old boy could preach it. You don't need a theological education at the end of the day. It's helpful. I've got one. My friends have one. I'm not against it. But don't be taken in by your seminary professors who think that their knowledge is what you need. You need to learn from what you can from them. But at the end of the day, if they turn that knowledge against the gospel, then you stand with the gospel and you don't be ashamed. Amen. It's time you stop being ashamed. It's time you started be, being bold for Jesus. The Philistines have come in. How dare they come in and make you intimidated as a minister of the gospel? Who are they? Who are they? Who are they? We stand with the living God. That's who we stand with. And he's with us and he will give us strength and power and he will give us hope and he will give us peace and he will look after us and he will be with us. Who are these seminary professors? Who are these bishops? Who are these superintendents who will come and stand against our God? Who are they? They're nothing. Their ideas and opinions will be out of date within 10 years. Our gospel will always be up to date and a living God and bring salvation to souls. Amen. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Come on now, get your Bibles out. You reformed preachers out there, get your Bible out and let's get into the Word of God, eh? You pastors out there, you Christians out there, you get your Bible out, let's get into the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah? God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and of sound mind. Stop worrying about your insecurities. Stop worrying about what people will think of you as a minister. Stop worrying about your reputation as a minister. Stop worrying about what people think of you. Who cares what people think of you? Worry about God and realize that God loves you, God's with you, and God is going to bless you. It doesn't matter what the enemies of God are doing to you. It don't matter what people are doing to you, saying about you, thinking about you. No, no. You look to God. You be happy in God. You be rejoicing in God. And stop being timid. Yeah? Stop being timid. Stop worrying about your insecurities and what people think about you. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 12. 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 12. Verse 12, be of good courage and let us play the man for our people and for the cities of our God and the Lord do that which seemeth him good. Let us play the man, let us be of good courage. Oh man, my, my friends, it's time for courage. It's time for courage. If ever the church needs men with courage, it is now. Joab was outnumbered. He was outnumbered. But oh, he was a man of courage. Psalm 27 verse 1. 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Come on. How big are the enemies that are against you today? How big are they? Are they big? Have they been winning? Have they been beating you up? Have they? Have they been beating you up in the church? Have they been winning? Have they desecrated your reputation? Made you look a fool in your church? Have they won? And now you fear? The Lord is the light, is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? You've got God and he is your light and he is your strength and he is with you. You do not have to fear as a minister. Let them stamp your reputation to the ground. Let them win because they are fighting God. And when God sees fit at the right time, he will vindicate you, my friend. Though your reputation be in the dust, you will rise out of the ashes when God tells you, tells you you will rise. Just like a big, great um, whale that may have been pushed down by a great big ship. And the ship goes and then suddenly the whale just comes swooping up and jumps out of the water. So you will rise. And be vindicated. Haggai chapter 2 verse 4. Haggai chapter 2 verse 4. Haggai chapter 2 verse 4. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel said the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Zechariah, the high priest. In the land, said the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. Work. Be strong and work, he says. Ye, not, ye now be strong, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Zodak, the high priest, and be strong, O you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. You know that. You know the passage. You know the background. The work of God was in a mess. The enemies of God were triumphing. And God said, work, and I'm with you. Work, and I'm with you. Work, and I'm with you. Be strong and work, for I'm with you. Minister, work for God. Work for God. Come on. Preach the word of God. Get working for him. Preach it, brother. Come on. Keep working for him. Serve him. Preach the messages. Teach the Bible. Come on. Have a heart for your work. Be strong. Yes. Revive yourself. He's with you. God is with you. Now work for him. Build the church. Teach the word of God. Redouble your efforts. Preach the word in season and out of season. Come on now. Go for it. Work. Yes, the secular nations are getting worse and worse. Yes, the enemies of God in the nations are getting bigger and bigger. Yes, the church is, is becoming apathetic. But now God says, work. Work is with you. We can turn the tide. We can see God going to bless. We can see souls going to get saved. Now, come on, work, minister. Work. Come on. Get those commentaries out. Get into your commentaries. Get into your Greek and Hebrew Testament. Come on now, minister. Come on. Get working. Get preaching. God is with you. He's going to bless you. Come on. He's going to give you strength and courage. Come on, work. Come on. Do not be disheartened, gospel preacher. Now work for him. Preach it now. Come on. Preach for the word, for the word. And do not be disheartened. Do not be discouraged. Matthew Henry said, We have no sufficient strength of our own. All our sufficiency is of God. He'll bless. Or oh, we could go on. Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, 17. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. 
chapter 4 verse 17 notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that I had known and that all the Gentiles might hear and I was delivered out of the mouth of lion God stood with Paul in his ministry as he preached my dear preacher my dear pastor He's standing with you right now in the ministry and he will not forsake you and he will be with you right now wherever you're pastoring wherever you are preaching he will be with you and he will supply your need and he will be with you so preach and be strong Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 and 11 Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 and 11 have I not courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest and Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying pass through the host and command the people saying prepare your victuals for in three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go into the possession of the land with the Lord your God has given you to possess it Joshua had marching orders go on the next thing we need to do is not be fearful and then know our enemy understand the opposition that we face So we got to know our enemy. Who is the enemy? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. Ephesians 6 11 and 12 put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers against rulers of darkness of the world against spiritual wickedness in high places when we're in gospel ministry the enemy is the spiritual dark forces ultimately they're the ones that are trying to pull our ministries down not people people might try and do it but it's the enemies of God behind them General Ulysses Grant said the art of war is simple enough find out where your enemy is get all get at him as soon as you can strike him as hard as you can and keep moving our enemies are spiritual 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them you see it's prayer ultimately our battle is fought on our knees in prayer against these dark forces we could go on let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 7 
1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 7 Moreover he must have a good report 